today must be the national let's have a person do a machines work day because all the traffic lights are off and instead there's people in the middle of the road so progress ciao this is mario a swiss car guy on youtube and welcome to another video of me driving around in my 2008 lexus ls 600 h and today i want to talk about watches and why many car guys are often also watch guys i think there's a couple of reasons for that well the first reason that i just want to get out of the way because it's the one i like least but it's because expensive watches like expensive cars tend to be status symbols so usually guys who are into sports cars who are into luxury cars who are into those expensive kind of cars they will usually also have some expensive kind of watch just to show off that well they can afford these kinds of things which i mean is fine but personally i have other reasons for liking watches and i think many car guys do as well i think many of us we are not just car guys because we like nice things i think many of us are also kind of um, you know mechanically interested we're interested in machinery, in how stuff works. This is why we can obsess over technical details on cars and spec sheets. And I think this gives a little bit of a propensity to also be interested in other intricate and interesting machinery such as watches. So mechanical intricacy, technical details. I think watches, a bit like cars, they offer a lot of opportunity you know to geek out over detail like in a car you go oh my god it has this and this gear ratio it has so much horsepower um, with a watch you have oh look it has a 30 hour reserve or you know it's it's a high beat movement it beats at 36,000 oscillations instead of just a regular 28,800 or 21,600 or whatever there is so yeah I see I think there are parallels between cars and watches from a technical standpoint and the similarities between cars and watches don't end there because also uh, like with cars there are mechanical watches like the conventional technology and then there are the electric watches which are a newer technology which you might argue for or against it's better it's not better you prefer it you don't prefer it but there's also this kind of divide I mean watches they were all mechanical up to the point where the electric watch was invented which I think must have happened somewhere around the end of the 50s and the beginning of the 60s. Oh and the electric watch changed everything. The Swiss watch industry was very very much shook by the electric watch and many smaller watch companies are no more because of that. But nowadays mechanical watches have had a large large renaissance. I mean even companies like Rolex used to make electric watches because that's what the market demanded and I think they stopped around 10 years ago because the market went completely back to mechanical watches especially for these high-end luxury pieces and usually people who want a cheap watch to just show the time they will just buy an electric watch and they are not going to spend like six grand on a Rolex so it didn't make sense anymore for these high-end manufacturers to produce that many quartz watches I mean they still do I think most of them still produce quartz watches. It's just Rolex that stopped. Another reason why I think many car guys are into watches is because many of us car guys, we are kind of suckers for history and for heritage. I mean, look only at Ferrari. They're universally beloved and not just because they make fast cars. I think many car brands do fast cars, but with Ferrari, for example, it's because you know they've always been just that and they've always been very successful at racing they have all this history all this heritage coming along and it's the same for i think many many car brands especially the desirable ones they all have this kind of history this long and weighty heritage and watch companies especially the swiss ones being extremely old they have quite a bit of heritage it's not just that there is a long history but it's also what that history was and I think especially wristwatches they tend to have an interesting history because originally they were mainly a ladies thing men would not wear wristwatches as they had their pocket watch that they would take out of their pocket and then open and then look at and put back and usually it would be women wearing 
watches on the wrist, smaller watches, maybe also as some form of jewelry. And for men, I mean, men don't wear jewelry, right? I think the first modern recorded wristwatch was one um, sold by Breguet, the watchmaker's watchmaker, to the Queen of Naples. And that was about in 1820 or around around then. And actually for men to wear wristwatches didn't really start until the very, very late 19th century and the early 20th century, until the mother of all inventions came along. Yes, war. Because officers in war, they realized that if they had a watch on their wrist, they could check the time more easily and it wouldn't always take them another hand. So military officers started wearing wristwatches. And I think Patek Philippe was the first one who started making a wristwatch aimed specifically at men. But that still doesn't explain why car guys are into watches. Well, in the good old days, and I'm speaking of uh, the beginning of the 20th century, many car guys were, you know, real daredevils. They were also airplane guys, like the early uh, aviators. They were adventurers. And in particular, there was one such early aviator from Brazil, Alberto Santos Dumont. And he was friends with Louis Cartier. And once he complained to him saying, well, when I'm flying my plane, it's really bothersome to look at the time. I wish I had a more convenient way to to see what time it is and Cartier made him a wristwatch and that wristwatch or descendants thereof they are still being made by Cartier the Santos so you see watches tend to have this long history and now it's early aviation it's adventure and this is something that usually appeals to guys who are into cars because we like you know at least the idea and the spirit of adventure and on this, on this heritage, I think it's easy to sell watches, to create appeal to people. I mean, I'm not immune to that. On the contrary, I mean, the watch I'm wearing today is a Panerai Luminor. Officine Panerai used to be an Italian watchmaker. And in the beginning of the 20th century, they started making watches for the Italian Navy. First with their Radiomir models and later on with the Luminors. And even though the company went bust a long time ago, it was sort of revived in the 90s. And now they are quite successfully selling watches to, you know, <laughs> nostalgic idiots like me. So today I'm wearing this Panerai. I think there are many other examples which have way more continuity than Panerai really has because for example if you also look at Rolex they make most of their models since the 1950s sure they have tweaked them in time but they're still the same watches and they are very successful because of that because of just how iconic their watches have become it's kind of like some cars which have also become iconic and only get you know changed very carefully over time like for example the Porsche 911. And let's not forget famous car guys or race drivers who are often associated with certain watch models. People who are admired and thus often imitated. First to spring to mind are Paul Newman and his famous panda dialed Rolex Daytona that sold for almost 18 million dollars in 2017. Or Steve McQueen and his Hoyer Monaco. In some ways, wearing the same watch as Steve McQueen seems like an easier way to be a bit like him rather than go racing at Le Mans. Of course, watch companies know how many car guys try to emulate their heroes and therefore every major race driver is sponsored by some prestigious watch company and acts as a brand ambassador. For example, Kimi Raikkonen and Richard Mille, Kimi Raikkonen and Tag Heuer, Ayrton Senna and Tag Heuer, Jackie Stewart and Rolex, about a dozen different Michael Schumacher Omega Speedmaster Special Editions. There was also a Michael Schumacher Limited Edition Royal Oak Offshore by Audemars Piguet. And at some point, Michael Schumacher was also a brand ambassador for Tag Heuer. A more current brand ambassador is Lewis Hamilton for IWC. Lewis Hamilton, who, by the way, Last year just lost a three-year intellectual property battle where he tried to forbid the Hamilton Watch Company to use the Hamilton name to market watches in Europe. 
something they have been doing since 1892. What a tool. Also, Lewis Hamilton and Tark Heuer. Has Tark Heuer sponsored every race driver at some point? But then there are also the direct collaborations between watch companies and car makers. Some are certainly more successful than others, but a few examples are Breitling for Bentley, where Breitling designed special Bentley themed and labeled watches, and Bentley in exchange branded the clocks in their cars as Breitling. I doubt that Breitling actually manufactures them. The same deal goes on for IWC and Mercedes-Benz, where on the Porsche Mercedes models the clocks can optionally be branded IWC, if that makes a difference to you. Zenith has done a series of Land Rover or Range Rover themed watches. Gégé Le Coutre produces watches in collaboration with Aston Martin, their AM Vox series. Oh, and by the way, with Gégé Le Coutre, we have another car watch connection. Originally, Gégé also made instruments for cars. They sold the majority of that division to Smiths in 1927 who went on to produce Gégé branded instruments for many cars such as Bugatti, Bentley, Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce and many, many others. Last but not least, we come to the numerous collaborations Ferrari has had with different watchmakers. It started with Longines in the 70s and went on until the early 90s when they switched to Girard Pergot. In the 2000s they made the switch to Panerai. Even Hublot has had the shot at the odd model. Now, besides the occasional ultra high-end Hublot, Ferrari watches have gone pretty much down market into the more casual $300 to $500 range and are currently being manufactured by Movado. Personally, I don't see the appeal of anything with the Ferrari logo that isn't an actual Ferrari. I guess a Ferrari branded watch must be the fancy version of the Corvette jacket. But another pretty obvious connection between watches and cars is in the timekeeping for motorsports. Looking at how lap times between Formula 1 drivers often differ by mere milliseconds, timekeeping is very important and watch companies have therefore been very much involved in motorsports. Many watch brands have had their shot at timekeeping in Formula 1. Longines and Rolex were quite active in the old days, but one of the most prolific in the field was Tag Heuer, who have been the official timekeeper of Formula 1 through most of the 90s and even sometimes after that. But keeping time was not just official business, as evidenced by the famous Universal Genève Compax chronograph worn by Nina Rind, the wife of Formula One world champion Jochen Rind, in the late 60s. She used it to track her husband's lap times. Wearing a precise and robust watch was a must to anybody involved in racing, before everybody had smartphones in their pockets. So watches were an obvious accessory for racers, and something we common people also have adopted as part of the car guy lifestyle. So these are the reasons why I think that many car guys are also watch guys. What about you? Are you also a watch guy or do you not really care about watches? Do you think it's just a eh, waste of money? Your phone tells the time. Please comment down below and also let me know if you'd be interested in me talking some more about watches because I do have a few watches and some of them are quite interesting. I mean they're not the most expensive watches in the world but some are they just have the the coolest history and if you want to see more about it if you want to see me telling about it and maybe showing off one or the other watch please comment down below let me know. Anyway I have blabbed on enough about watches so thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. So basically you always buy the history as well and now I'm going into a tunnel <laughs> and I should continue filming but I just don't want to. It even looks like it's exposing me properly but I don't believe it. Never trust the tunnels. Don't trust the tunnels.